Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. We're gonna be starting a new series here where we highlight one of your own watch collections, one of your rotations. Uh, this video, this belongs to, well, actually this collection belongs to a friend of mine in Deutschland, in Germany. Uh, he's got an excellent watch collection with a lot of variation. Variation in manufacturers, different movements, different complications, different colors, different materials. We have everything from stainless steel to titanium to composite to precious metal. So I'm gonna have fun sharing these with you guys. Andy has done a great job in videoing his watches, capturing the essence of each one of the models. And I'm gonna be dropping in these videos here so you guys can see what he wears on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're gonna talk, you know, yes, about the models, some of my favorites, some of his favorites. We won't go too much into detail. I don't think we're gonna hit every watch just for the sake of time. But we will talk about collection philosophy because I think that's an important thing in a video like this. And you guys will notice Andy, he's done a great job at amassing a varied collection. You know, one that's powerful, one that's unique, that speaks to him. He's not being influenced by talking heads uh, that say, you should have a vintage Sea Dweller. You should have a Paddock 5711. You should do this, you should, you know, he's not listening to those guys. He's buying what he enjoys because ultimately that's what's most important about our hobby. This is our hard earned money. This is our wrists that these watches will be worn on. So buy what you enjoy. Don't buy what other people think you should own because they don't care about you. You know, they don't know you. Uh, they're not buying watches for you. So buy what you enjoy and just have fun with this because orology, collecting watches, wearing watches, this is such a fun hobby, as, as you guys know. And uh, so I'm really liking what I'm seeing from you, Andy. You're obviously going with what you enjoy. And I think, uh, I just think that's awesome. That's perfect. Now, let me talk about a few of these watches here. If I had to pick only one that I could take from Andy's collection and put it in my own watch rotation, it would be hard, but I would choose uh, this UN Marine Chronometer Manufacturer. I, I, I think UN doesn't get a love, enough love from us watch enthusiasts. And uh, this model, I mean, this is their icon and they've done a great job with it. There's excellent finish work and excellent attention to detail. And you guys will notice this throughout the course of the video. A lot of the watches that I feature here from Andy's collection are rich in detail, rich in execution. That's a, that's a quality that I really, I really value as a watch collector. So you know, when I buy a watch, I want it to have the crispness and the clarity and the detail so that when I take out my macro lens, I'm impressed and I'm not disappointed. So I, again, this marine chronometer, this has got excellent attention to detail, excellent finish work here on the in-house movement. I really like the fact that the rotor is shaped like an anchor in form and how that ties in with the branding of the watch and specifically this model being the marine chronometer. So uh, I, I love it. I love the blend of rubber and metal, the coin edging, the color, the layout. I think this is a pretty powerful watch. I would love to have one in my own rotation. Now let's go to uh, one of Andy's favorite watches. Uh, this one is the Zenith Open Sea Limited. This is one that he really enjoys wearing. And again, like I said, excellent attention to detail, uh, excellent finish work here. This one has the power reserve complication, which in my opinion, it's one of the more handy complications. We can get a little silly <laughs> with complications that don't necessarily affect us or are sp specifically helpful in a day-to-day -day situation, but a power reserve indicator, I think is helpful, especially when you have a collection of this size and you try to keep each piece running, you know, you're winding, you're using winders, um, you know, you're wearing the different watches. It's nice to get a quick gauge at how much juice is left in the movement. Now let's go over to this Adamar Piquet Royal Oak Offshore Chronograph. <laughs> now Andy had the classic uh, 15400 ST uh, years ago in 2013. He sold his kind of before everyone went crazy for the Royal Oak, which is my own grail watch, my, my own personal grail watch. But Andy, he regretted selling the 15400 and he missed it. So uh, he rebought 
an AP, but instead of buying the exact same model, he switched it up a little bit, obviously with this offshore chronograph. And it's got the factory bracelet that just has that, oh, that beautiful light play, the finish work here. And as I understand, it adds quite a bit of weight to an already pretty hefty case. And so this one is just a statement piece. You know, you look at this and you see the powerful design, the excellent light play, uh, the visual pop here, the presence on wrist. This one is an eye grabber here, whether you're a watch fan or not. And if you do, you know, happen to run into another watch fan that notices your uh, offshore chronograph, it's a great segue into having a, a, a neurological discussion, a good conversation starter. So uh, I really do enjoy this one here with the deep silver dial. Now let's go over and look at a couple more affordable watches from Oris. Andy really enjoys Oris as a brand, enjoys wearing titanium, the lightweight, comfortable nature. And uh, he told me specifically that he got just a deal he could not say no to on these watches. And I love that because I think you guys can relate to this. When you get a crazy good deal and you add that watch to your collection, there's something that's just so satisfying about spending a relatively small amount of money and getting a ton of uh, enjoyment from the watch. So Andy has that here in the Oris's. That's something that I, uh, that I really relate to. Now here's another watch, uh, this Rolex Yachtmaster 16623 that Andy noticed on a biology professor of his years ago on his wrist. And he loved the watch. He looked at it and said, you know what? I'm going to own that watch one day. And as you guys can see, obviously he bought the watch. He fulfilled that goal. And I think that's something to be proud of. I think that's really awesome. And I will say it's a bit refreshing to see only one Rolex in a collection like this that has, you know, everything from Zenith to Hublot to uh, Breitling and AP and UN, uh, Eterna. There's, there's just, it's nice to see just one Rolex highlighted here as opposed to a, you know, as fun as it is, a massive collection of Rolex. Now the last watch I wanna talk about is this Chopard super fast flyback chronograph. Now this one is done in precious metal. Uh, so it has that amazing weight and heft and luster that comes with precious metal. And I love the fact that Chopard does not skimp on the gold. As you guys can see, there's quite a bit of it here in the case. It's also found on the clasp. And uh, I might sound like a, a repetitive talking head again, but again, the tension to detail is awesome here. Look at, look at this movement, this in-house movement has fantastic finish work, great movement architecture. Uh, this one has gotta be a fun one to put on wrist and enjoy. So I'm gonna leave it there on the watches we're gonna talk about specifically, but let's go back to collection direction. Again, Andy, I've gotta applaud you with going with what you enjoy and not listening to people telling you what you should and shouldn't buy. And I know even in the comment section, we're gonna get people that say, well, you should sell that, you should keep this, you should do whatever. <laughs> Don't listen to them. I mean, obviously take it as you will, but uh, you've done a great job. You're going in, I think, the right direction as a watch collector with what you enjoy, what you, uh, what, what brings you fulfillment as a watch fan. Now, that being said, I know I just railed against don't listen to other people, but I'm gonna tell you what I think you should purchase in the future, or at least a suggestion for you. You are welcome to tell me to go jump in a lake if you want to. Uh, but what, seeing as you're from Deutschland, from Germany, I'd love to see a German manufacturer here in your collection. Now, I know your Zenith, the, has the the German tie-in with the Red Baron, but uh, seeing a watch maybe made in the Glashütte region from Glashütte Original or Nomos or Alanga und Zona, that would be pretty amazing. And I think would add to the variation of your collection and have that attention to detail and craftsmanship that's already displayed in a ton of your pieces. So that's what I would say, <laughs> buy a Glashütte, buy a Alanga, and um, and enjoy it. So I have to say, your collection, sehr gut, sehr schön, und uh, vielen Dank. So guys, if you wanna have your watch collection featured here on my channel, you're welcome to reach out to me via email. Send me what you have 
in your collection. You know, let me know. Uh, I want to feature collections like Andy's that are unique and that have good stories behind them. And they're not the same Seikos and Omegas that, although we love, we see all the time. So let me know if you're interested. You also need to have some skill and prowess with a camera. You know, your smartphone is totally enough. You don't need to go out and use a DSLR or anything like that. But you do need to have, have some understanding of light and, and showing off a piece. If you meet those criteria and you want to see your collection highlighted, please reach out to me on the channel. I do have a couple more lined up, some really, some really fun ones. So thanks guys for taking the time to watch today. I hope you guys enjoy taking a look at Andy's very varied watch collection. I had a good time and uh, we'll see you in the next video.